Hello everyone, welcome to this new lesson in which we'll start painting all the textures we got in the previous lessons. As you can see, I opened uh, in Photoshop a series of textures. We're not going to see them all, because obviously this is also depending on the painting technique each of you use, and the stylage and every one of you has. I'm going to simplify quite enough the workflow so you see the procedure and we'll paint the most important or complex textures. There will be a lot of them in which you can practice yourselves with your techniques or your brushes, okay? So well, we'll go to the flower pot and the first item on our list is that we need to set a facial expression to this flower pot in order to create a character. And at first glance, we can't really tell in which side the face would be. For this, we'll switch to Cinema 4D. And if we go to the UV preview window, in our flower pot we can check the front side by clicking on it. And we can see it highlights this part of the projection right here. So here is where we'll draw this face. We can do this by creating a new layer and we'll paint here the face we want to paint. In this case, we'll just put a mark on it so we know this is the front side. Another thing that is usually done is the background which is right now transparent, but it's common to set a background color similar to the base color. I said similar because if it was the same, we'd have this problem. It would be so hard to see where we're working, so what is usually done is painting it in a slightly darker tone in order to be able to tell apart each part. Besides this, you already know if we select the layer and click on the Lock Transparent Pixels button here, we can paint on the layer without going over the edge on the texture. For example, I pick a color. And we could paint without going over the edge. All right? Something I'll be using here is one of the faces that I used when I was making tests for this course. So I'm going to get one of the faces I have, okay? I'm going to grab this texture from a previous test and I'll take the color from it using the eyedropper first. We go here. And we'll paint all the elements with a big brush using this color, like this. And we're going to use this face here, which I'll provide along with the coarse materials. I got this face from an artist at Freepik. It's a vector, so you can take faces from there or make your own, okay? This face would go right here, okay? We can combine layers now, and from now on, we'll lock the layer and we start painting, okay? So now each of you should start using your painting techniques. Me, for example, I would use the brush and using low opacity as always, I would start painting the bottom of the flower pots. We can use different brushes, like the, the classics or the ones we can download from galleries. In this case, as I'm saying, we're especially interested in painting the bottom parts, which are the ones with more shadow. And over it, in order to solve this problem we see here, we can just create a new layer, use Alt to grab the eyedropper, and now we'll start painting this part in order to make sure later on the texture 
It looks good. Okay. It's okay we go over the edge, since the texture only affects the zones we set when laying the polygons on the UV map. Now for example, since we're done with this, we can use the mixer brush in order to stretch these zones, okay? We do these movements in order to make shadows bigger in the bottom part. We can also do the same in the top part. We grab the brush tool, the eyedropper, turn down opacity, and we can also slightly paint on the top so it has the shadow of the rim. And using the mixer brush tool, we water down all this paint. Not much more to do for the bottom parts. We can just paint a bit like this. And now expand this paint with the mixer brush tool. Like this. It won't be much noticeable, so it's not important. Let's move on now to what I was telling you about. In order for the background to be more similar, we grab the eyedropper tool and we paint this slightly darker. Okay, and this is what we could already save. Let's move on to the next texture, which is the mid chunk. What I usually do here is lock in the transparent pixels and start making some color strips. Okay, around this zone. Using the eyedropper, we'll pick a clearer color, for example, like this one. And we draw these lines like this. Okay, there it is. Now we do some darker lines. Notice that I'm not putting on much detail. Now you'll see the procedure. Finally, some clearer ones, which will represent the grease stripes. Well, now that we have these, we go to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur, and using this option, we have to set this angle in the stroke direction. There. And from here, we can make the blur strength bigger. we would set something like this, and that would be it. The mid chunks are ready. Let's move on to the next texture, which is the cactus body. The first thing we notice here are some little errors on these zones. So we'll start solving all these, combining all the layers. So right click, Combine layers, all right, because we have the transparent background, which is all that matters. So we'll grab the eyedropper and start, for example, painting these lines here. Okay. All right, once we've painted these, we can start to mix these two borders, okay? So we grab the mixer brush and using Alt, we select this color and start painting the borders. This way we water down this line and it will look much better afterwards when we load this in our program, in our external engine. So we keep doing this, like this. Now for example, in the outer parts here, we can use the eyedropper holding Alt and start to slightly paint these zones like this. Okay, like this. And now it's all about creating a depth effect. 
It's just about digital painting and I insist that the quantity of time we put in this will make the result be one or another. So here you can apply all the painting techniques you've learned in other courses. We can use the brush tool now. Take this color, we make it darker and we'll paint a light line like this in order to create more depth afterwards using the mixer brush tool. Now we get the mixer brush tool and start watering down the edges like this. As you know, we can modify wet or any other parameter perfectly, okay? For now, as a default, I like to work with this brush because it creates the effect I'm looking for. We use the eyedropper and we paint around here a bit lighter, like this. And why not? We can paint some details, some color dots, for example, using yellow color. So we grab the brush, pick a yellow color, and patiently we start making dots. Anything you're not sure to make in this position, obviously do that in a different layer easily. Then this can be saved in PSD or TIFF and have different versions. Good, so now as I was saying, it would be about keep on drawing in case we wanted to make some more details, okay? And the more detail the texture has, the better it will look afterwards. Anyway, remember we're working on a low poly look, a cartoon look, so it's not necessary to work too much on the texture. It's about flat colors with some shadows. Nonetheless, you can spend the time you see fit. You can put as much time as you'd like in order to paint all these different ways or uh, I'm saying using your particular methods, okay? Now we're painting the guacamole. We paint these arrows here and we'll keep on working on it. In this case, we'll grab a lighter color. We'll make the brush smaller and we'll do a spiral in this guacamole mountain. We'll later make some more strokes using darker green. I insist in the fact that all this depends on your drawing technique and how you finish your textures. I'll fast forward this so it doesn't feel never ending. But basically, as you can see, I water down the paint, paint again with a darker color and keep watering down, okay? Like this. Finally, I pick a white color, for example, in order to make little stains, which in this case won't have any polygon. It will be just color stains, okay? But later when we put the other objects on it, it will look good. All right, here we have the tortilla. And obviously, sometimes you'll have different projections depending on how you did the modeling or how you projected it, it will be different. Notice there are some blank spaces. These right here. If this happens, you don't have to worry. You just paint it in Photoshop and we'll lay a texture over it. In this case, we'll look for a photo, which we'll later obviously edit in Photoshop so it doesn't look like a photo and we'll place it on top. Here I have a photo of some tortillas. So we pick the elliptical marque tool in order to copy this sound, for example. We duplicate it. We can delete this, okay? And we paste it over here, for example. Now we could scale it or go to edit, transform, 
warp in order to stretch this element properly and adjust it to the texture below. Okay? Like this. When we're done, we simply duplicate it, okay? And now, for example, this burn here, in order for it to not be in the same place, we grab the patch tool and substitute that zone. We can combine both layers, and now, as you see, we can use some kind of filter, or we can also blur this image using motion blur, okay? A bit like this, so it doesn't look like a photo that much. Choose direction, angle, and now, for example, we can choose a filter in the filter gallery, manage the different parameters they offer, and make it look more like an illustration. As I'm saying, there are many ways of making these textures, okay? In this case, we can pick this one, for example, and tweak the parameters like these in order for it to be far from the photography look. Then we can use the Mixer Brush tool to put the finishing touches. We select the tool and we patiently blur all this paint. We create some more new strokes made by hand and we keep blurring. This way we'll get a base with which we were able to make an illustration. Okay, let's go on to the lemon with which we'll make the same. We'll take a photo and we'll slightly modify it in order for it to make it tend to look like an illustration. Now we use different filters and modify it. For the ring, we'll simply use different strokes. Mixer brush tool and that's it. Some shadows, as you see. There are elements like the dish, which can be a bit more difficult. In this case, for example, we want to paint on the dish. So we can switch to the Cinema 4D program and check which one of the projections is the upper part, okay? In this case, it's this one, the left part. And now we're back to Photoshop, and in this case, we paint the left part since it would be the upper part of the dish. In that matter, you can do any motif. For example, I lock the transparent pixels, pick a, pick a color, switch to the brush tool, create a new layer. And on the new layer, I'll start drawing a pattern or a drawing, whatever you want. In this case, I'll do something simple, just these semispheres patiently. And in the middle, I'll place some yellow dots, and this would be enough. The central part a bit darker, and, and we're done. We'll be doing something similar for the sombrero, but in this case, we can do the ornaments in the upper part using the pen tool. But before doing so, we can place some guides in order to make it easier for us to make these triangular shapes. So we place these guides and using the pen tool and choosing a good stroke like this one, for example. Let's try this. We'll pick a white color, for example, or any other you like. There it is. Notice we have the stroke and the filling. We want to delete the stroke and keep the filling. Now we duplicate this and place this layer around here. There. Now let's double click here and we'll set this part green. OK, around here, click OK, OK. And now we duplicate this layer. Now we'll rotate this copy and we'll set it up here, OK, like this. 
Let's go to transform for a moment and we'll hit this option in order to modify these parts that were a bit crooked. And now we'll paint these white, like this. We'll do the same with the other triangles, so edit, transform, skew, and we'll align the corners. Okay, so we select all these, combine all the layers in order to join everything in the same object. And now we'll just duplicate these triangles in order to place them on each side. Since we have the guides, we use them and get the pieces positioned to match perfectly. Okay, there it is. Good, so now it's time for us to start painting, as always, all the parts remaining, both lights and shadows. So let's leave this part of the course here, and in the next one, we'll finish painting some of the most interesting parts, like the background or the ground. So see you in a bit.